He's the former governor of Minnesota, movie star, TV host on MSNBC, you name it. And he's governor, Jesse Ventura. He was almost last week. We were talking off air and we're like, yeah, why don't we do off and on weekly updates over the next seven weeks uh, as the uh, hit show Conspiracy Theory is in its third uh, season. We're going to talk some about that. They were saying last week it's going to be the death ray tonight, Tesla technology, which I do know the FBI came and seized all the stuff after he died and that the man uh, was a genius among geniuses and made Thomas Edison, uh, well, look like a, a novice uh, like myself when it comes to electronics uh, and the application of science. I can grasp the basic systems, but certainly not the development of it. Uh, so that is uh, what's scheduled uh, to come on tonight, 9 o'clock Central, 10 o'clock Eastern. And Governor Jesse Ventura joins us. After he leaves us, I will get into uh, the developments in the economy. Jesse, let me throw a curveball at you here, Gov. Sure. Uh, there, as soon as Obama got elected, the economy started accelerating its implosion. But that's what Max Kaiser and Gerald Salente and others said would happen, that as soon as he got in, they'd stop propping up the economy, scare everybody just like they did four years ago. Uh, to say, hey, give us more taxes. And now they want a VAT and a carbon tax that I know you exposed in some of your shows. But most of it will go to prop up the too big to fail derivatives. Uh, you did a big groundbreaking special on the Wall Street Mafia. Uh, what is your take on uh, this being held hostage that, you know, if we don't give trillions more to the bankers, they'll implode the economy? About four months ago, I saw the article where OPEC, led by the Saudis, said they were going to increase output to help Obama. Well, I don't know about any of that. You know, again, it, uh, it's a case of that. I don't think it's necessary. I think the same things would happen if, if Romney would have won. I don't think it makes any difference. No, no, I agree with you. But uh, the system wanted to get their people back in, and then they wanted to... Uh, drop the hammer on everybody uh, afterwards to then say, oh my gosh, uh, the economy is in all this big trouble. Uh, we need to bring in this whole, uh, you know, system of more taxes to fix it. Well, that's above and beyond me. I will say this though, Alex, on a personal note, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm doing your show so damn much. Uh, they tell me now my disapproval ratings on polls are near, nearly 60%. Well, that's not a nice thing to say about my show. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just saying that I'm, I'm, I'm unbelievable that I have disapproval ratings of nearly 60% now. Yeah, Governor, you're looking at that wrong. All politicians, and you, I know you're not really a politician, more of a statesman. You stand for what you believe. That's the definition of a statesman, uh, trying to help others, not a, you know, just help themselves. But Congress has a 9 to 12% approval rating, depending on which Gallup you look at. Well, just to expand on that, a lot of these polls are fraudulent as well. Uh, yeah, I understand all that. I, in fact, I bet you money. I just did a poll last week with Harris. I could go and pay to have a real scientific poll done where, where I write the questions. It's real, very simple. You know, uh, you know, what is your favorable or disfavorable view or unfavorable view of former Minnesota Governor Jesse Ventura? Just one question put to him, and I bet you'd get 60-plus percent positive. Uh, but, uh, no, I mean, it's it's all part of the hatred of government, period, uh, and just anyone even associated with it is at all-time highs, even though you say you don't like either party. It could also be that people get so politicized in the final stretch of an election that you're bashing Republicans and Democrats, both sides then get mad at you. Yeah, that's true, too, because if you add up the numbers, 
60 would be about how many Democrats and how many Republicans there are, because it's roughly 30 apiece. Yeah, sure, and about 40 percent uh, call themselves independent. Exactly. So maybe it just breaks down that way. But I just found it kind of interesting because there was a time when I was governor, my disapproval ratings were single digit, if you could imagine that. But this is a phenomenon they're seeing where people, it's a depression and people are disgruntled and anyone seen as successful is also going to be hated now. Uh, it's an, not only are the elite getting very corrupt, the general public by and large is becoming more degenerate. That doesn't mean everybody, it's just that that segment uh, is, uh, I'm sure you've been out on the street and seen how people act and behave nowadays. Absolutely. I just wanted to get your take on that. Sure. Uh, uh, yeah, the death ray. I mean, we've talked a lot about wh what your favorite episode is, and, and I think they're in the death ray. They said last week they were. I noticed on the side it doesn't say what's airing tonight. Uh, do you know what's airing tonight? No, I don't. I just looked at my TV and I went to the show tonight, and they didn't give any information on what show was airing. But according to last week, it was going to be death ray. So what the heck? We'll talk about death ray. <laughs> it was, to me, the most interesting show to do. Uh, give us tidbits of the death ray. Well, it, you know, of course, Nikolai Tesla allegedly developed one, and then uh, uh, the government came in when he died and took everything he had. And my tie into the death ray is this. Here's my feeling on it. Back in the 1980s, Ronald Reagan's main focus was to create Star Wars, which was a, a system to where if missiles were launched at our country, we would have the mechanism to destroy them in the air before they would ever arrive here by some means, be it laser, be it whatever. Well, they spent billions of dollars to develop this technology for Star Wars, and we never did learn, were they successful? They never came out and told us. It all of a sudden just disappeared. It went off the map, and there was no more discussion or talk about it anymore. So we as the general public were left with, well, did they create Star Wars or didn't they? And it's of my belief, I think, that they were successful and that they have created it. But they're just simply withholding that information from us, the general public, because most of the time, whatever level the government is at in discovering things or whatever they know, they're usually 20 to 30 years ahead of what we know. And the case in point, what's interesting, the way to look at that is, take a look at Star Trek and all the things in the old Star Trek movies that are now reality. I mean, in Star Trek, they had the little cell phone things. Well, now everybody on the planet has a cell phone and walks around with it, just like, it, just like in Star Trek. And they have all these other things that they show you in Star Trek that I believe that have come to fruition today. They are a reality today, 20 to 25 years later. So by using that analogy, what we know they have today, what do they really have? And in this show, I do an interview with John Hutchinson, who has what they call the Hutchinson effect. Well, he's a genius, never went to school. He, he actually told me he worked on Star Wars. And he looked at me and, he'll t and he said the most profound thing to me. He said, do you really believe that people like me haven't discovered anything beyond the jet engine for the last 60 years? Think about that. They want us to believe they have discovered nothing beyond the jet engine for the last 60 years. I find that very hard to believe, Alex. Well, I agree with you, Governor, and while you've been talking, I put up the earlier mainstream articles about in March when the White House pressured the Saudis to increase oil output, they did, and I pulled up physics news. Uh, the Army has rolled out lightning bolt plasma laser weapons, and it looks just like something out of Star Wars. Uh, so, yes, now they are rolling more and more of it. I had Dr. Steve Pachinik on yesterday who worked at high levels in the government, and he said they're 30 to 40 years ahead with space weapons, what they've told us. And so I think that's part of the governing class's arrogance treating us like animals is because they think they're gods now. Well, that, that may be, you know, I don't know, but uh, I certainly believe that they're very secretive on letting us know what they do and they don't have and uh, what, they, what capabilities are out there. And, uh, you know, probably, but I would say I'm 60 years old now, so what they have right now, I, I may not even learn about because I could 
gets shuffled off the planet by the time it becomes uh, regular knowledge. Well, does it under the national security state, wasn't this going to happen since 47, where our money can be taken, unlimited trillions, and, and then in secret develop underground bases, super weapons, you name it, to where now they're just like, sit down and shut up. The Congress is told by the secret government, the shadow government, sit down and shut up, and they do it. So it's a breakaway civilization is what we're talking about. Well, again, Alex, you know more about that than I do. I would just tell you that uh, we have the right, if they use our money, to know everything they're doing. That's my opinion. Well, it's not your opinion. That's law, but now they even ignore the foyer suits and the rest of it. I mean, it's just out of control. It's almost like the old Greek legends where they said the gods would walk amongst them but had all these incredible powers. Soon the globalists with their sci-fi weapons and stuff will, will, will be like gods amongst us, the commoners, but they're still going to be humans just like us with all the rage, all the problems, all the everything. We may end up like Atlantis, Governor, and blow ourselves up. Well, we're going to go to break, Governor, and let's talk about more of the death ray straight ahead with former Minnesota Governor Jesse Ventura. I'm Alex Jones, and this is the GCN Radio Network. Their website's GCNlive.com. We have been robbed. Globalism has been a curse to this country. Everything the globalists are doing worldwide is about making you dependent. I'm getting storable food. You need it because it's the only insurance that you can 100% use. I have, you know, family that are veterans and people like that uh, who can't live off their Social Security, who are disabled and things, and that's why I've bought so much food. Charity starts at home. I promote what I believe in 100%, and I believe in what they're doing 100%. And the globalists do not want you to be self-sufficient. I hope you will take action, get the six free meals when you pay for the shipping, so that you can eat them and see that it's quality. That's why I chose eFoods, is I did my research, I tested a bunch, bought a bunch. The other stuff was like cardboard or filled with MSG or made in China. So bottom line, folks, eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Alex. Follow the banners at InfoWars.com or call the toll-free number 800-409-5633. That's 800-409-5633. joking about coming on my show being unpopular he, he was pointing out that the minnesota paper there in minneapolis did the poll they're always writing negative things about ventura uh, but i started obsessing over polls and numbers i, I tend to do that uh, but but he brought up the real reason he said he might be unpopular locally they only publish the uh the sworn testimony of people that admit they weren't even there and weren't witnesses of hearsay that jesse said he was glad u.s troops were dying which i know he would never say I've been driving along in the car with him when he talks about troops dying and he gets a tear in his eye, and you've heard that on air. He would never say that about Navy SEALs. That's asinine. Why would he be there speaking at an event for graduates and then say he's glad they're dying? I mean, if you really said that in the Navy SEAL bar, you would get your butt kicked. And the point is, is that, um, well, well, you got to tell him because, I mean, obviously the guy has no witnesses. That's coming out. You just, they just deposed you. And, uh, I mean, make the point you made to me off air, Jesse. I haven't had my due in court yet on that event. He's had he's been spotted all over TV. He went ahead and said all the stuff that he said last January when I was down in Mexico and couldn't even defend myself. In fact, you defended me, you know, which I appreciate. And uh, and so I haven't had my due in court yet. And so there could be a lot of hostilities towards me. I can never redeem the fact of the damage he's done. But when I have my day in court, hopefully the truth will then come out and it will resurrect me and maybe my popularity will return a little more. Yeah, but the Minnesota papers always had it out for you. I'm telling you, I could have, do a poll and, and, and have them 90% in favor of you, so don't let that get you down. But I think that... <laughs> oh, I, it don't bother me, Alex. I just, it just caught me off guard a little bit. I didn't, you know, it's, it's kind of... You know, no, I know, but getting back to this, like you notice it was Roman military precision. Right when you crossed the border, 
you, uh, in your RV, it happens. I call you once you get to your place in Baja. You say this is totally made up. So I had to, you know, get you on via audio Skype to defend yourself. Right. Uh, but I mean, look, you have been a major presidential contender. They've done national polls, as you know, showing that you beat people in a three-way race. And you were talking about running, and they wanted to destroy you. And uh, so you've got, I mean, you've got to defeat this guy in court. And uh, I mean, I, I don't want to give away the, you know, the goods here, but. Uh, I'm not, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, if there's any justice, you're going to win. Well, uh, put it this way, you're exactly correct, Alex, because if it gets to the point where you can lose in court over an event that never happened, well, then this country is, in my opinion, truly lost. If you can go into court and, and lose over an event that never took place. Well, he also says in the book six times that he lies. Oh, yeah, if you read his book, you'll, you'll see that he admits to lying on multiple occasions. Unbelievable. Uh, in closing, we'll be back with another 30-minute update with us uh, next Wednesday. Uh, Jesse, great idea. You had to do these updates, and we appreciate your time uh, there taking care of the family. Uh, in closing, more on the death ray. What's the most exciting part of the death ray episode about Tesla coming up tonight? Because this is, this is I, probably... I think, I think it's all exciting because I want, I want people to watch the show tonight with an open mind, and I want them to listen to the facts and look at the photographs that we show on this death ray stuff, especially with its tie in the 9-11. Uh, the most exciting part of the show to me is the segment with Dr. Judy Wood, the physicist from Virginia Tech. Uh, I, that part is just intrigues me beyond belief in this show. But And also the fact that we will give you, you'll see how you can defy, with, with John Hutchinson, you'll see how you can defy gravity, and you'll watch me, Jesse Ventura, alone, show you how free energy does exist. Yeah, I saw some of the footage that you guys had together. I haven't seen the episode yet. And, and I tell you, this one is going to be amazing. Uh, tonight, 10 o'clock Eastern, 9 o'clock Central, I'll be watching it. Uh, and uh, then we've got the other episodes. Uh, still any word on why they canceled the eighth episode of TSA? Uh, no idea. I, I was unable to see Piers Morgan. Were you able to get that out on air? Piers Morgan, <laughs> are you kidding? Piers, Piers Morgan pulled a sham on me. They said they wanted to promote the show. They got me on, and all he talked to me about was the election. Amazing. And, um, and that's what they do to you. <laughs> I had to promote the show. He didn't. Did he get upset uh, whenever you started bringing up the show when he would had you on no, about No, but I wasn't on long enough. I, I waited for him to do it. He, he opened with it that, that I had the new show starting. And then he went into the election, and by the time he got done with me, I had like 30 seconds left to throw another quick cross-promotion out there before he signed me off. All right. Well, Gov, we'll talk to you again next Wednesday for 30 minutes. Thank you so much for joining us. I'll say bye to you during the break. Okay. Thanks, Alex. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. All right. Speaking of Venturas, uh, I got his son coming up next to uh, break down not just the new episode coming out, but the election. So much more. We'll get Tyrell Venturas' take. Former governor of Minnesota, movie star, TV host on MSNBC, you name it. And he's Governor Jesse Ventura. He was on with us last week. We were talking off air. Certainly not the development of it. Uh, so that is uh, what's scheduled uh, to come on tonight, 9 o'clock Central, 10 o'clock Eastern. And Governor Jesse Ventura joins us. After he leaves us, I will get into uh, the developments in the economy. Jesse, let me throw a curveball at you here, Gov. Uh, there, as soon as Obama got elected, the economy started accelerating its implosion. 
But that's what Max Kaiser and Gerald Salente and others said would happen, that as soon as he got in, they'd stop propping up the economy, scare everybody just like they did four years, and we're like, yeah, why don't we do off and on weekly updates over the next seven weeks uh, as the uh, hit show Conspiracy Theory is in its third uh, season. We're going to talk some about that. They were saying last week it's going to be the death ray tonight, Tesla technology, which I do know the FBI came and seized all the stuff after he died. And that the man uh, was a genius among geniuses and made Thomas Edison, uh, well, look like a, a novice uh, like myself when it comes to electronics uh, and the application of science. I can grasp the basic systems. But One thing down on the street level I noticed was how right before the election, the gas prices up here in Minnesota just tumbled. I mean, gas dropped nearly a dollar a gallon. And as soon as the election was over, now they're going back up again. I found that very interesting that, you know, they've gone up now 20 to 30 cents a gallon back up. And, now uh, you know, they sell nearly a dollar a gallon before the election. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, about to go. Uh, to say, hey, give us more taxes. And now they want a VAT and a carbon tax that I know you exposed in some of your shows. But most of it will go to prop up the too big to fail derivatives. Uh, you did a big groundbreaking special on the Wall Street Mafia. Uh, what is your take on uh, this being held hostage that, you know, if we don't give trillions more to the bankers, they'll implode the economy? Well, you know, I, I've never worked at that level to deal with the bankers at that level. So I, I don't have that experience, Alex, but